Bongiorno. This is going to be either episode 68 or 69 of the Hoopercast. I'm not sure. I'm not sure of a lot of things. I'm not sure of you, really, most of all. Anyway, um, I've talked about The Purge enough on this show, but uh, Sam and I sat down so I could show him the film for the first time, and he had some some thoughts that uh, I've not uh, gone over on the show before. So I thought I'd just... Uh, give you this episode as me and Sam uh, talking about The Purge a little bit more. So if you're not a fan of the movies at all, if you're sick of me listening to them, just go ahead and skip this episode. You won't offend me. You shouldn't care about offending me. I don't care about offending you. I don't like you. I hate you, actually. <laughs> just I hate you. So anyway, enjoy the show. Testing, testing, testing. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, how close do I need to get? Looks like I got to get pretty fucking close. Okay, Sam, so you just saw The Purge for the first time. I did. But you had some issues. Uh, I've got several issues. Um, first of all, uh, like we we paused it a couple times and, and talked about you know different things that were going on, but I think we both were kind of like... Not sure why the kid was so affected by it. I get that he's a child and murder and everything else. Mm -hmm. But in theory, this child has grown up, the youngest child has grown up with this happening basically his whole conscious life. Yeah. Uh, This is the norm for him. Right. Whereas the parents have definitely seen what it was like pre and post purge. And how I I can understand that they would see that things are better post purge. But uh, I feel like it would still be more of a struggle for parents to, like, for older generations to be used to the the idea. Yeah. Or, whereas I think the kid would know no better. Like, would know no other way, you know? So that was, I mean, not a big, not a big problem. But at the same time, I understand adults being more able to cope with, with a new norm, whereas kids just altruistically are like, but why, but why, but why this? But it's just like, look, it's just the law. But why is it the law? It's like, okay, but right. it's, just forget about it. And and I, like I said, I mean, it kind of, kind of, di- I, I, it kind of irked me, but not to a great extent. I, I can see it from both ways. So it's mm-hmm. not, it's not like a huge plot hole or point for me, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just thought it was kind of odd. Um, secondly, and I'll give you credit because as soon as it happened, I was like, you know, they, they start showing the neighbors coming by and like, oh, they're having a purge party and everything. And I was like, I don't like these neighbors. And to your credit, you didn't give anything away. <laughs> uh, but I, I was like, I'm not, mm, not so hot on these neighbors. Yeah. I, and, uh, <laughs> turns out I was right. They're fair. They're far too jealous. <laughs> um, I mean, for such a wealthy neighborhood, they're really upset about it. Yeah. It's like. I don't know. Yeah, not everyone had the year you had. It's like, yeah, well, bitch, you still live in this neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, it's not like you so, had a bad year. Yeah, uh, but what'd you make? One point one million this year instead of one point two. Yeah, which, which, uh, you know, another problem I have. Uh, if it's such a fucking nice neighborhood, <laughs> how on earth did they get all these trucks and shit in? Like they show you the gate at the front, but uh-huh. like for such a nice neighborhood, you would think that they could afford. Some, some serious uh, fortifications, like you know, anything. <laughs> Apparently, these <laughs> these group of masked marauders just came in, really with no hindrance. Yeah. So I have I, I, I kind of have a problem there. Yeah. Uh, I I yeah. I wanted to hit the kid as soon as he I know. Let, the, let the guy in. Oh, I, t- Although, I told you I would have shot him. I would have yeah, just killed him. Like, but I understand, like like we talked about, more altruistic sort of sense yeah. coming from the kid. I get it. Um, but really, how do you know that that kid, that that guy, was not like 
sent to to open your defenses in the first place to make it look like yeah someone's in trouble and then come in and kill he just runs in and kills the whole family yeah um like i, I feel like here there's a couple things i noticed the second time through like i i, I never changed like points of view in terms of, like who i sympathized with but like i feel like the scene where they're arguing about why it's so bad that Ethan Hawke is going to tie the guy up and give him up to the Marauders. Like, but dad, look, it's wrong. And I feel like, I feel like the audience is supposed to be <clears throat> on like the, the wife and kids side at that point. Like, yeah, that's right, guys, this is wrong. But you and I disagree. We are totally on Ethan Hawke's yeah. side. It's just like, and for Fuck me, it's just that. like, yeah. look, if it's him or us, Look, it's him. It's terrible <laughs> luck, and and I would have used it as a lesson. Like, son, this is what happens when you harbor um, runaways. This is what happens when you meddle in other people's purges. It endangers the family, and let this be a lesson to you. That uh, like I, I would stand there with them, the head marauder, <laughs> and the guy tied up in the chair, and be like, okay, now I just like to use this as a quick example before you guys, <laughs> yeah, you before know, you guys kill this guy, before you guys me, cut off have, this guy's let me, head. Let me let me have a lesson here with my let me, son. Let me let me let me, let me make sure to to siphon Teaching any moments. wisdom out of this that I can with my son. <laughs> son, and you have like a little pointer, like this is an unfortunate case. And you point at him, and you go, "This man." You point at the marauder. This uh, is uh, is a is a legal purge practitioner, and this is his business, not ours. And uh, this is what happens when you don't uh, mind your p's and q's and mind your own business. All right, continue. And then they just blow him away, and you make him watch, and you just go, "Yeah, this this uh, you remember this every time you see a guy screaming for help, don't help him. <laughs> it's not <laughs> worth it." Um. Which, another, another pole, sort of, like, they're in this really nice neighborhood, Mm -hmm. and the Marauders were obviously well-to-do, rich, snobby kids, basically. Um, So, how did they chase a homeless guy all the way to this neighborhood? Like, that homeless guy has been, like... Several miles, probably. It's been a while. Unless it's like Mobile, where there's a really nice neighborhood next to, like, a really awful one. True. I mean, it's it's possible. It's just just kind of the logistics. Yeah. I'd like to see a map. (laughs) Yeah, because if this is Los Angeles, it's like, he ran pretty far. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, What are some other things? Uh, The the girl, okay? Uh Uh-huh. The daughter. Um, yeah, the daughter. Uh, totally get that she's upset that her boyfriend just got shot, okay? Mm-hmm. Totally understand. Um, but boyfriend deserved to get shot. You pull a gun on somebody on the purge night, you best expect yeah. to be in a firefight. Uh, on purge night or not. Well, true. But yeah. uh, I still don't understand why she didn't just go with the mother... Immediately. Immediately. Like, they found her, and then, like, she's trying to, like, the mom's trying to talk to the son and the daughter at the same time. That's one of those uncanny valleys where, like, if you were to ask the writers that, they'd be like, well, you know, grief. It's like, yeah, well, yeah, grief, but honestly, when your adrenaline's running, the grief doesn't... But there's an intruder. That's secondary. Like, Like, what's, what's first is your survival instinct. Yeah. So the first thing you're thinking is, oh, we got to get out of here. It's later when you're waiting and you're in the room and everything settles down where you you finally crack and you go, oh, my God, he's dead. Yeah, when it really hits you. Yeah. Um, hmm. <laughs> did you enjoy it overall? Yes, I did. I did enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I've... It was enjoyable. It was just frustrating. <laughs> yeah, to watch I, I, because there's so many things that I would have done differently. Something I noticed the second time was like they're, they're waiting. You know, this is the point that where the Marauders have broken in, so everyone's like in separate rooms, like you know, waiting, and and so there's a lot of like <laughs> like up like right up, just like heavy breathing and shining flashlights from where you're hiding out into the hallway. Yeah. You know, poor hiding. Kind of a dead giveaway. (laughs) Like, I'm in here. It's like putting a laser sight on your. It's like if a sniper had a laser sight. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, well. Oh, Oh, he's in that clump of leaves. Yeah. I followed the laser sight. (laughs) Yeah. That's where he is. You know, it's just like, look, if you really want to. Like, honestly, I know you want to be able to see from all corners. Like, when you hide, I get it. But honestly, the the best hiding place is where you can't see them. They can't see. You just have to find a hiding place and hope they don't find you. Yeah. Period. I agree. I agree. Um, 
Now, I, 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 like I said, I, I sort of called the neighbors being mm-hmm. evil. I, I, I could, I just got that sense from them. Um, yeah. But I don't, uh, I don't know. It just, oh god, it <laughs> irked me so much that okay, like they came in, they kill all the marauders. Oh, they look like good guys. Uh huh. But I never felt like that was the case. Like, yeah. may, maybe like other viewers probably would. Yeah. Like, just the way it's going. But I never like as soon like, as oh, they they're came saved. In, you know. Yeah. As soon as I saw them come in, I was like, "This is just Uh-oh, gonna get worse this is for bad. everybody." Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I just cannot fathom <laughs> these people were going to murder you and your children <laughs> in your own home you fi- after after your husband has already been killed by marauders and, and you finally have the upper hand. <laughs> Black guy that you have saved, homeless guy that you have saved. That you were gonna sacrifice yeah. and change your mind on had to had to change a heart. Yeah. You know, good for you. Doesn't abandon you. But but this is what <laughs> like you talked your husband into doing that basically instead of just giving up the guy and you got your husband killed. Yeah. Okay. Like that's where we are. Yes. And now he comes in, shoots somebody, takes another one hostage, saves you, gives you the option. Like, what do you want? to Yeah. Do? What do you want to do? <laughs> Uh, I want to fucking kill them. Yeah, I want like, to shoot them all. You, you, here are your options. Uh, yeah. Kill all your neighbors yeah. or uh, move. <laughs> like, those are your options. <laughs> like, you can't stay in that neighborhood now. Like, what What are they thinking? Yeah, well, like, I would be, rather get new neighbors. I would rather get new neighbors. Yeah, I just kill them all and have a bunch of nice people move in. Yeah. Like, hey... <laughs> We're totally grateful to live in this awesome neighborhood. Apparently a bunch of... Like, I would act like uh, we moved, just moved in, too. I'd be like, apparently a bunch of people got murdered here during the purge. I have no idea, but... Uh. Yeah, they, just, they got killed by other people. I, yeah, definitely not because they're jealous of us. I mean, not that... You know, now, of course, you know the breadwinner's dead, so we got to figure something out. Yeah, they're going to have to move anyway, Yeah, I guess. exactly. So maybe that was her idea, but... Uh, That's what you do. You kill them, and then there's, like, what, two hours left in the purge? Go into all their houses, take all their jewelry and valuables, and sell them... And then you don't have to work at all. Sell your own house. Yeah. Which, sell the house, admittedly, yeah. is going to need some repairs. But uh. <laughs> I was telling you during the, during the movie, man, work for, like, carpenters and carpet cleaners and locksmiths. Yeah, any sort of contract work. Yeah, is, is, must, business must be Booming, <laughs> booming the day after the purge because all you're doing you're fixing you're 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 cleaning up the streets you're you're washing blood out of carpets and you know yeah um I was telling you also during the movie that like there's like a subtle it's it, it's relatively subtle it could have been a lot more beat you over the head with it but there's a subtle like message of how like. Like over the radio and, and news and stuff as exposition, like, well, some think the purge is not about, um, you know, cleansing and all that other stupid psychological, you know, Sigmund Freud shit, but more about killing all the homeless and the poor so yeah. that the economy can thrive. And it's just like, I don't like that they that they basically say, oh, well, you know, if the if the haves and the right wings and the Mitt Romneys had their way, you know, if the Purge came, they'd totally roll into the ghetto and shoot a bunch of and homeless people. Every, yeah. And it's like, you know, first of all, A, that would totally work. <laughs> and B, maybe they wouldn't. C, if they did, so what? I mean, if it's the Purge, then If it's like, the Purge, they can do what they want. Their... And it's like, you know what? You know who I'd shoot if it was the Purge? You. You, fucking intellectual high horser, you. I'd come find you first. <laughs> I would, I mean, here's the thing, here's the other thing about that, is if that's the case, if you're, you know, if the upper wealthy, you know, class is killing all the poor people, uh-huh. uh, like, are, are we just assuming the poor people don't have guns? Because they do. Like, there's, there, everybody's got guns. Like, yeah. It's not like the well-to-do people have... I mean, they might have more guns, but that's not going to mean... Like, that's not going to mean that much. It, yeah, I, I feel like the look, purge it, it, is more of an even playing ground. I don't know that it would work out quite like that. Look, like, sure, there's easy homeless, like, alcoholic targets, things like that. I just feel like but, it's really, like, after watching both of these movies, like, The Purge and The Purge Anarchy, which you do need to, you, you ought to see. Right, and I, it, yeah. And, um, uh, I'm thinking everyone, like, even with Marauders, there are steps you can take to protect yourself, and they're 
easier than you think. And the first one being like, oh, well, what if you're homeless? What if you can't? All you have to do is go to the nearest woods yeah. and like lay down in the leaves and don't move hide. for 12 hours. Yeah, just hide. Just hide. Perfect the art of you just you know just piss on yourself. Jump, just jump in a dumpster. Yeah, like, I don't care what you have to do. Yeah, like just bring like you know uh, some some to- I don't know, but like y- you know. And in the second movie, there they show different kinds of people. Like some people have like dogs to hunt. You know, so right. okay, okay. You'll, they'll have to run at that point. But right. I mean, if I was homeless, the first thing if it was purge night. I'd go in the woods two days earlier, so no one even knew where I was. Yeah. No one could even follow Trump, me. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, with some food, some dry goods, and I would, I just, I would have prepared better. I wouldn't have, <laughs> I, I wouldn't have been on the streets for a year and then be like, oh God, I have an hour to hide. <laughs> yeah. You should have hidden like a week ago. I would have hidden in someone's trunk for, for a Dude, month. Dude, hide in those dumpsters, they're everywhere. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. And that's another thing. Uh, with the, the whole like, oh, we've killed out like all the unemployed poor people sort of thing. It's like, and by the way, at the very beginning of the movie, they say unemployment's at one percent. Yeah, that's a net positive right there. <laughs> <laughs> but here, here's an, here's another problem with that premise. Uh, if you just allow one, you know, one day out of the year, people to kill people, mm-hmm. uh, that's not how it's going to work. People are going to like people don't <clears throat> just. Normally, okay, and that's yeah. and that's another problem that I had. Like people don't just be like, "Oh yeah, I'm just gonna kill whoever." You have a problem. You with, have like, you have like a grudge. Would You're gonna this kill premise someone. actually work? Like, yeah. Would it actually work to channel violence into a, into a 12 hour period? Like, would people adhere to that, or would it would it condition them? Because I was thinking about this too. Like at the end, when they're all circling around, they're saying the they're saying like the chant, and it's like these people may not have normally murdered anyone. And yet, when they're given an outlet to murder, it's like they allow themselves to to to, to justify it. Well, see, that's the thing. It, Does the purge create murderers? Right, and and you know, if like I, I don't know what the statistics are, but I'm sure like a overwhelming majority of murders are you know you knew that person. There was some history there. Mm-hmm. Like, there's not that many just random killings. So. If that's the case, like, why, you know, you let the purge go, why do you think that people are just going to all all of a sudden start wiping out, like, the low man on the totem pole? They're going to kill each other. They're going to kill who they know, who's pissed them off, like, the boss that fired them, the, mm-hmm. you know, the girl that cheated on them, like, things like that. And... You know who doesn't win in the purge? Who's that? Therapists. <laughs> Yeah, because there are no I mean, more therapists. Yeah, everybody's just like, no, I feel better about it now. Yeah, it's cool. I'm gonna go purge. It's like, oh, we just want to talk about your feelings. Not really. No, I, no I'm, I'm good. good. You're, you're quite <laughs> I shot expensive. That guy in the face, and I feel great. Yeah, I killed the mailman <laughs> finally, and it's all it's all good. He was sleeping with my wife too. I had to wait a whole year to kill her, <laughs> but she's gone too. And see, that's like you said. Like you know, they're at the end doing the circle prayer thing, which is all sorts of creepy anyway. Oh, like apparently. America is like this cult on Purge Night. Um, yeah. But it's it's like, it goes along, you know, the same lines as like, you're not living in that neighborhood anymore. Like, you are, everybody just automatically becomes a sociopath ready to kill people on the Purge. Like, that's what I don't understand. Like, everybody, no, like, they were all like, oh, yeah, we're going to have a little party and like, lockdown and all this other stuff. And I get locking down. That's basically what I would do. That's mm-hmm. probably all I would do. Yeah. But they're just like, oh, well, we saw the opportunity, so we had to kill you. Like, uh, uh, really? Is yeah. Because like, and and, and if, it's, cause it's if you a saw the metaphor. Opportun- yeah. Like, if it's a little metaphor, like, we hate you, we hate you, we're envious, and your house is so nice. First of all, we're all mature adults. Is that really gonna eat away at you that much do you really look out the window and go the sandons are so rich and so nice i love their house it's a fraction better than ours <laughs> yeah and i just i they can't got think, an addition and we didn't i can't think of oh. anything else other than i hate them like just go just go have a drink and shut up like this is this is just go be an alcoholic and keep to yourself <laughs> like so it's a little metaphor for, for the whole concept of the purge which is so we were locking down, but then we saw an opportunity to kill someone we hate, so we took it. 
So it's like, all right, but otherwise you would never have dreamed of murdering the Sandins. Oh, God, no, 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 we can't. So then the question becomes, like, philosophically, does the purge, like, the purge has short-term benefits for the economy. Right. You know, in general. But what does it do to people? And that's kind of the point of the movie. Like, like yeah, this, here, here's why, here's the only way you could justify this as a nationwide government-sanctioned event would be the net positive effect on the economy. Right. You know, and quality of life for every citizen, There, therefore. So, does, <clears throat> you know, does the short term, does the horror of all of this, you know, does that, is that outweighed by all the, the benefits of thinning the herd? Well, and, and see, another thing, as you were talking, I was thinking about it, and you said, you know, therapists lose out on this, but like... <laughs> You've got 12 hours once a year. There are some people brooding about it for 364 days, you oh, know? Yeah. Like, so maybe therapists are doing all right. I don't know. <laughs> like, I think, like... It takes an awful lot of self-control to not kill for a whole year if you're, like, inclined to kill. Yeah. I mean, I don't... I don't think... It said crime was all the way down, like, really low, too. Crime was, crime crime was like, an all-time low. So I just don't... <sighs> it, said, it said crime was, like, virtually non-existent. I think if you were driven to kill, you just couldn't hold out for a year. Depending on, I mean, depending on the situation, obviously. But. It's kind of like saving your money. Like you save your money all year, so that once a year you can go on, you can go to Disney World. Yeah, some people can do it. Most people don't have that kind of self control. So, do you buy that most people could could save all their rage and all their crime urges for a certain day? No, I like, don't. People like you and me could. Right, we are gonna, you know, but like, what would I do on Purge Night? I'd probably, st- I'd, I don't know, what I'd do. I wouldn't kill anybody. Like, like, I, yeah, I, 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 I would, I might like steal a TV or something. Yeah, I, 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 I could, I'd loot. go to a store. Yeah, I'd loot. I'd, I would just loot. But the problem with that is you're out there. Now, yeah, there's someone to kill shot, you. Like, right. So I, I, small time looting. You know, maybe at the very beginning of the Purge. So I, it's, it's, it's an interesting philosophical discussion. Um, and as I said the first time we reviewed this on the podcast. I want to, I want people, I, I, what's good about the sequel is that it's, it's written and directed by the same guy, and um, they're already churning movies out, franchises out, like Paranormal Activity, which is low budget, right. high yield, but they're shit. These movies actually have something to say, and an interesting concept which yeah. to me, my which is my favorite my favorite concept in movies is when they do a slight adjustment on reality, like everything else is as you know it, but one thing is different. What's the one thing, and how would that make life different? Well, the one thing here is the purge is 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 the annual purge, right? But cars don't fly, you know, like robots. There's no like butler robots. There's just the one thing. Now, how would how would that affect? And that's why they're so good. It's because everything else about everything else is as you see it, as you remember it. But the one thing is different. And I like the world that these movies have built. And I, I want to keep seeing, and it's the kind of franchise where you can see this event from different people's points of view. Right, exactly. And it will sh- tell you something different about human nature and, you know, yeah, and, morality. And al- along the paranormal activity lines, like, I, yeah. I enjoyed the first couple of those movies. Yeah, yeah. But this movie, you know, or these movies aren't just about, you know, shock value or scaring no. you. Like, there is some sort of discussion to be had about just yeah. the ideas behind it and the way people would handle that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right, then. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.